Well, hey guys, welcome back to the bench. I have something really small to show you today. And it's this little stereo amplifier board, Class D. And there it is as the focus catches up. It's a PAM8403. 3 watts per channel into 4 ohm loads with a 5 volt supply and that thing is tiny here's the back not much to see well one issue is there are no connectors you'll have to solder leads onto it in order to use it and that may or may not be a big deal depending on if you have a soldering iron or not but here we have the power supply and it's a 5 volt device so you really don't want to exceed that but you can use it with lower voltages if you want here's your input left ground and right your outputs are over on this side this is a bridged type amplifier so you should be able to get decent power out of it I mean it's it's going to be a low wattage amplifier I'm hoping we get better than one watt of clean power per channel. And because it's bridged, we might be doing a little bit better than that. I don't know. Just have to get some measurements. Bought it off of eBay. Looks like they have a, a web page, invistamall.com. Maybe you can buy them direct. They're very cheap. You can buy a couple of them for five dollars or so five or six dollars free shipping here is the paperwork that came with it if you want to pause the video and read this it says it'll work down to two and a half volts so certainly try that out okay well, I'm going to solder some leads onto this and plug it into a breadboard and do some listening tests and uh, later we'll get power measurements from it. And there it is in that spaghetti mess of wires. See, I soldered the little pins on and ignore this other stuff. That's the amplifier from the last video. This amplifier is completely on its own, except I did add a capacitor across the power supply rails. Since my leads are kind of long, I would certainly recommend doing that. Like a, a 220 microfarad or something like that would work just fine. Okay, listening test. I have the music player hooked up. I have to be careful now that I'm monetizing my channel. Because if there's match content, you do not get paid, period. So, YouTube now has quite a list of, or I should say a selection of music you can download and use. So that's what I'm doing now. And I'm monetized because, you know, I review these amplifiers for you. I build these things. I don't use them myself. I build them or uh, test them. I'm getting quite a supply of them now. And, you know, I, I use my own money to pay for these things. So I'd, hopefully I can earn enough where YouTube, you know, my uh, earnings can buy me those amplifiers instead of using my money out of my own pocket. So that's the reason for that. But anyway, let's uh, give a listen here.
must say I'm impressed. I usually have bad luck buying stuff on eBay. Like if you watch my past videos where I got those bum LEDs. They were junk. But this thing, number one, it actually works. Number two, it actually sounds very good. I don't hear any distortion. Music sounds smooth and accurate to me. And if I was going to do a real listening test, I'd hook it up to my Boston A100s in the front room and, you know, listen to it for a few hours. But I can tell, you know, enough from this speaker that it sounds pretty good. So it's not a bad deal after all. Okay, now I'm going to have to rig up for testing the power. Problem is, it doesn't have the output filters. It's one of those filterless designs. First, let me grab a AM radio and see if it uh, does cause any interference. Well, the problem is there's so much electrical noise from computers and things in here, so I'm not sure. But I have the amplifier off now. Let me power it up, see what it sounds like. There's the radio. Getting a little bit. Four, five, and DAV. Oh crap. And that's from something else. I turn the amplifier off. I'll turn it back on again. I am getting kind of a whistle. It doesn't seem very strong. Uh, it does a lot for our team on both ends of the floor. And uh, I think he's starting to become even more vocal than, uh, than we want him to. Anything programmed in here? So people don't have to worry about how they have to secure their firearms or if they can even take them if they're going certain places because uh, right now, kind of mark and eye policy is we avoid the places where we can't yeah. and that's the punishment. I would say interference is really a non-issue. You know, when you're tuned into a station, it just doesn't really bother it. Especially putting the antenna right on the wires like that. So yeah non-issue with interference as far as a quick test like this i mean you could use a spectrum analyzer and see all the notches and stuff but you know as a quick little test yeah i don't see an issue okay i have my non-inductive four ohm loads connected i'm scoping right at the load and as you can see you know the amplifier is just sitting idle no output or anything. Seems like the uh, output frequency here is around 220 kilohertz. And you're just seeing background noise. Hang on a second. Let me turn that music on, back off, so the... There, that's better. So that, that's just one pulse. And you're seeing it's trying to vary it the width of that pulse and the scopes triggering here so that's going to be steady and this side will vary with the width of the pulse and you're just seeing the background noise you know that's very small you know the amplifier is pretty quiet even if I put my ear up to the tweeter while it's sitting idle very small amount of hiss so it is a fairly quiet amplifier and I should mention that uh, it does have enough gain with music players it's kind of just barely you know it's, it's right on the edge but it will work okay with music players okay now let me play some music I'm gonna have to add an out output filter but see if I can stop this 
as it varies you know playing music I probably should play a tone so it's more, more consistent but you can see some of the pulses are longer Maybe zoom in a bit see, it's stretching out the pulses as the music waveform goes higher and requires more output so that's what pulse width modulation is all about however that poses a problem I stopped the music there but it, like I say it poses a problem because I can't get a good measurement of output power unless I add filters with these filterless designs so I'm going to have to rig something up okay so I rigged up this filter here because this is bridged each side of the bridge has to be filtered so one half of the filter is the choke and then the capacitor of the ground and then of course on the other side of that bridge has the same thing so it's just kind of like a mirrored image in the center is connected back to the ground over here and that pretty much gets rid of most of it not all of it but most of it and um, turn a signal on so you can see there we get a nice sine wave and this filter you know I didn't do any calculations I just kind of threw parts in it starts to roll off above two kilohertz so I'm measuring the power at around 800 make sure there's not too much filter interaction there with our measurement and you can see we clip there I'm going to back that off to get a nice clean waveform no clipping looks like 2.6 volts okay let's find my calculator and uh, again we're using 4 ohm loads 2.6 let's square that and that's 2.6 volts RMS by the way and divide that by our load impedance now we're getting about 1.7 watts of clean power both channels driven that is nothing to complain about that little board can put out a reasonable reasonable amount of power for a you know given that it's only being fed a 5 volt supply I also take measurements at four and a half volts. You know that's equal to three batteries, one and a half volt batteries, and at three volts. See what it can do. And I got the rest of the measurements for you. Like I said, this is both channels driven with four ohm loads. We got 1.69 watts per channel with a five volt supply. 1.44 watts at four and a half volts and at three volt supply it was down to 0.66 watts or 660 milliwatts and by the way that happens to be the same output power of an LM386 with an 8 ohm load operating at nine volts so yeah that, that's pretty good minimum operating voltage is two and a half volts it started to cut out at three or 2.3 volts so to be safe I wouldn't go below two and a half volts the quiescent current at 5 volts is 23 milliamps and quiescent current just means the amplifier is powered up but has no signal being fed into it so that is pretty good for a stereo amplifier it, it won't draw your batteries down too much when you're just sitting idle. One thing I should mention about measuring quiescent current, have to use it with the normal speaker load because non-inductive resistors, they will absorb some of that switching power because it's, you know, there's no filter to get rid of it. And a regular speaker coil has that inductance. So that's something to think about. One last check here is distortion and you do see some notches however take those with a grain of salt because these filters are not really audio quality 
and there might be some non-linearity so I really can't get an accurate distortion measurement with this but you know like I said measuring by ear the amp sounded pretty good well that wraps this up very impressive little amp puts out a decent amount of clean power just with a 5 volt supply into 4 ohm loads the distortion you know just listening to music it sounded very clean um, not a lot of noise you know background hiss so I am impressed I thought this would just be another pile of eBay junk but it turned out to be a very good low-cost tiny little postage stamp amplifier well that's it thanks for watching